Hello, this is Mr. Ubuntu, and welcome to another episode of my Let's Play series of the Technic SSP mod pack for Minecraft 125. In this episode, I'm planning on making a taint infection, and I don't know how I feel about that, but I think it needs to be done because we have, well, actually, I reorganized some of these things so that I don't have a completely full iron chest by the end of this episode. And um, we have four discoveries in the Tainted Knowledge category. I don't know how many there are, but there are definitely more than four. And we are out of fragments of knowledge in that school of knowledge. Um, I've been throwing some cobblestone in here just between episodes, not very much, but again, because it's very uncommon to get the tainted knowledge, um, fragments of knowledge from the cobblestone researching. I don't suspect that we'll get nearly enough to actually finish the tainted knowledge discoveries anytime in the next several episodes. But what might be fun is to go to where we have the dark infuser and set up a taint infection. My plan for that is if we go to the area with the dark infuser and we put this V condenser and on the V condenser just put a stack of V crystals, not tainted ones, just V crystals, then Putting a chunk loader over there, the uh, teleport tether blocks that I still have a few extra of in here, yeah, right here, then that will allow that area to basically pull all of the V from the aura and keep whatever taint is in the, the aura there still intact. And so that should cause a taint infection. Um, and if it doesn't, we'll just have to do more stuff over there and let the taint build up in the area while still pulling all the V out of the atmosphere. So um, before we run over there and do that quick, I wanted to point out I took off the boots of the meteor because after doing a little bit more reading, um, turns out the fire that you see when you're holding shift to go down with the boots of the meteor, that fire can start things on fire that are next to you while you're going down. So if I'm like, I mean, if these bookcases were flammable, I don't know if they are or not, but they never caught fire. But um, just in case those types of things are in places that I don't want a fire to be, like right here, if I'm holding shift next to these and one of them catches fire, because apparently that's how it works. It can start things on fire as you're holding shift and descending. Um, so if one of these caught fire by accident and I didn't catch it right away, I would be kicking myself for a good while um, and I don't want that <laughs> so um, these are basically being removed I am going to make seven league boots again because that was really fun um, let's see that required vaporous and boots of striding which was earthen and leather so let's actually make that really quick and um, the hunger oops the hunger bar was... Uh, why do you not sort right? Whatever. Um, okay, so vaporous and earthen. Okay. Um, so the hunger bar was going down faster when I had the boots of meteor or boots of striding on, or whatever, se seven league boots, any of those, because they basically are making it seem like you're running constantly and the game treats that as if you're running constantly um let's see leather four leather and two feathers okay so let's make the boots and then let's get these other things made so uh feathers boots and earthen crystal And now we make the seven league boots. Because this was really fun and I'm really looking forward to having it. But I'm not going to upgrade it to this guy again. 
And actually, with a smelting value of 143, research value 13, I might just smelt these down, because I have no use for them, really. Um, that's at 500 already, with a bunch left over. Eh, I'll throw them in here for now. Okay, so put these on. Cool. I am running now. Put those away. Put these away. And we needed to get a fish to make that last um, charm of vigor so that I don't need to constantly eat apples or something while using these boots. It's a really good combination actually. Um, kind of coincidence that we ended up getting the charm of vigor and getting the boots pretty much the same day. So um, yeah, and the crucible of eyes, it is an upgrade to the standard crucible, but it's not one that I'm going to actually end up making because after doing a little more reading, this one does not stop things from smelting when it gets full. It does emit a redstone signal, which for example would turn off a connected furnace, but that wouldn't prevent things from being smelted. I keep forgetting I have step up now and it's just going to be confusing if I constantly do this everywhere by accident. Um, anyway, so the furnace would turn off if I had the one of the upgraded crucibles, but the crucible is still going to be cooking whatever I throw in it and overflowing and putting that into the atmosphere as taint, which I'm not really concerned with here because of my setup, but I still would not like to waste resources on making something like that if I'm not getting the benefit of having it automatically turn off when it gets full. There is an upgraded version of that, which is the Fomium uh, Crucible, but that we need to get in, I think, Lost Knowledge Research. So basically keep researching and we'll eventually get it. Um, so these are organized by type, and you can see that on the scroll tie. So all of these are Lost Knowledge, the green. Um, and then we have here Forbidden Knowledge with the Wand of Bone, and, and that's Tainted. No, wait. Yeah, and Eldritch is like the dark red, and purple is Tainted. Okay, so what to do? Do we get a fish, or do we start the Taint Infection? Let's do the Infection and then the fish. And it's becoming nighttime. That might be okay. Um, what else do I need? Anything. Eh, doesn't matter. Let's go. Alright, Dark Infuser, check. And I kind of want to have this a little bit further from the ground, because... Well, nah. Nothing should be able to get onto this tree, or onto that tree, from the ground in a tainted area. Because basically what will happen is the t even the trees will convert to tainted versions of themselves and um, all the sand and whatever will convert also and the things that spawn in the area will be like a tainted creeper for example or a tainted chicken and none of those will climb or be able to fly rather and none of them I don't think there's tainted skeletons of any kind so I don't need to worry about being shot while I'm up here except by maybe regular skeletons spawning in the area but I can fix that later if I need to, with like torches. Anyway, let's get this going. So, um, going to do the whole, the old uh, sand and torch thing here. And, yeah, help if I actually put the right block down. Okay, so this is where we're going to put, in a second, that is in a different chunk. That's okay. As long as all of these are in the same one, that might be all that matters. So, let's see. Okay. Now, I don't need to put this way up here. I just like to keep chunk loader type things out of the way. So, teleport tether. Wow. I think if I hold shift and jump, it, like, doesn't have that um, super jump happen. Okay, so let's try that. Shift, jump. Yeah, it's just one block. It might take some getting used to. Um, I'll just keep that there. I like a little bit of light. 
All right, V condenser. This is the key, and <laughs> it's gonna make this overflow eventually, which is even better for making a taint infection. So, yay! This is this is exciting me. A little nervous, just more excited. Um, I'm gonna throw like half of my aqueous crystals at this because I have waste. I have, I have just so many of them. Um, in fact, I'm gonna throw most of my aqueous crystals at this. I might regret that later, but who knows. So, it's pretty neat, and it makes little twinkles. I didn't realize that last time. I don't know if you can hear it. It's the experience orb tinkles. Okay, so 103 taint, 78 V, and it is nighttime. It's only half a moon, so it's not like most efficient, but I would expect this to have already changed by now, but maybe it's like once a minute that it updates? Once a half a minute? I don't know. No matter. Um, let's make that charm, shall we? And now that that's there, this area is going to stay loaded. I just hit F9. This whole area here is going to become a taint infection. And the area around it shouldn't become a taint infection because I'm not going to be around here for it to stay loaded. But just having a few chunks that have taints in them, even one chunk, which should be enough, because then, you know... No, thank you. Um, because then... Oh god. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, just having one chunk with taints is enough, because I only need those blocks for the research, and then that's it. Okay, so this did update. It got three... Three more V, uh, and I don't remember what the taint level was, but it's it's going, so that's good. Oh, that might be a progress bar. Cool. Anyway, turn that off and teleport back to base, and then I would like to go to my overworld place, the one that I used for initial chicken egg collection. So let's go there, put those away, because I really want this Charm of Vigor. Um, right, so that's all good. So let's, uh, actually let me take a peek at something quick. Okay. So the other base is over here, and um, I don't have a book over there, like a knowledge book to uh, teleport over there using the hub, but you know what? We're gonna make one. Do I have any... I'm pretty sure I have books on me, but just in case I don't. Yeah, I do. 47. Okay, let's just fly over here. And by the way, I don't know if we'll get around to it, but this here, pretty sure it's an underground mineshaft. reason I don't know if we're gonna get around to it is because we have the hub the Mistcraft hub dimension with all the mine shafts sitting right next to my base. Super easy to get to. And loads of stuff, really easy to loot, just flying around. So I don't know if I'm going oh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to uh try to explore Oh my god, why is it sorting like this? It's, it's totally broken sometimes. Um, yeah. Just kind of under pearls. Okay. Um, but yeah, it's really easy to just get the stuff that I want from that dimension instead of coming into some place in the uh, overworld and trying to find loot in that would take a lot longer, I guess. That's what I'm saying. Um, Alright, how my chicken's doing? Still alive, I see. And noisy. Alright, I should have fish in here. I'm going to get attacked in a moment, though, so let me just take care of the spider.
Fish. Lovely. I knew I had some here. And since I'm here, I may as well just bring more stuff back. Heck, I'm gonna bring, like, all this stuff back. Anything that's really worth smelting. Um, wood? Sure. I want him before I teleport back. I don't think so. But yeah, there's a lot of silverwood trees out in this area. And I think a great wood or two, from what I remember. Um, actually, those in the distance. Yeah, that's a great wood. Um, should be one over that way. Okay. Yeah, I don't think I have anything else over here that I want, so... Let's just go back to base and drop off a bunch of stuff. I really need to dedicate like a whole episode to the Mo Creatures mod just to make literally a whole pit of snakes, for example, and maybe have some ostriches to ride. Should be able to ride them if I remember right, but that might be a later version of mole creatures. This is a pretty early version of it, so there's some features that aren't really in here, but you can catch fish in bowls. Um, you can tame cats, and you have to take care of them or they get angry at you. Um, but yeah, I don't know how much of that I want to get into. And when I want to do that, I think I'll just do it after I maybe get to endgame in Bombcraft 2 and Equivalence Exchange. Alright, so let's make this. I shouldn't have eaten actually, it would have been a nice test. But, um, drop these off. And, what else? That goes in the bread maker. This goes in my alchemy bag. Oops. Gets put away. And this gets put away. Some of these. Yeah, it should be good. Okay, so I think it was just both of these. Cool. And what seems like 100 or 150 V. Nice. Charm of Vigor. So this is going to basically make it so that I don't get hungry. And the boots will make it so that I would get hungry. So now I can just use the boots all I want without thinking of food. And I suppose I could sprint with them even. Because they don't take durability loss when you do things like that. And this is awesome. Apparently there's some further speed that you can get through enchantments and through using quantum suit leggings from Industrial Craft 2. Like some special ability with it and combining that with these boots you can go super fast apparently but um, I think I'm satisfied with this and I'm not going to go into the industrial craft path for a good while if at all in this let's play series so I might have to try that some other time alright so we got Charm of Vigor I'm going to put these other things away and we can check on the taint levels in the other area now the problem is using that um, that V condenser during the daytime is kind of inevitable since we have the area chunk loaded and it's much less efficient during the daytime apparently so we're kind of wasting V crystals by doing that but I don't want to have to keep going out there and removing crystals and adding crystals or, or something just to kind of make it more efficient so it is what it is Goes here and red. Okay. 
so let's see how that's doing out there. Ah, oh, I totally forgot. I forgot to make a book out there. So I'm going to try to stay focused this time, make a book to be able to teleport there from the hub. And then won't have to fly over this whole area just to check on it. But thank goodness I've got this ring, because taking this path by boat, it's a lot slower, but it's also more dangerous, if you remember the spawning groups of sharks or whatever. Alright. A boat. Oh my god, guys. I am totally blanking. I <laughs> don't know why I thought that I had to go back to this place instead of the other place. My mind was in the wrong spot. Let's go back and actually use the hub to get to the right place, but first... Yeah, I am gonna put one of these. Since I'm already here, don't want to waste that whole track. Um, sure, that's a good place for it. And... Linking book, check. Press the wing. Update the linking book here. That's there. So it wasn't a waste to come back here. Um, press the wing. Check. And now we go to check on the tain infection. Or the not yet tain infection, but hopefully growing one. Alright. So tain level is going up. But the V level, the aura, is still quite high and we still have oh my god it's still on the first one it barely went down it's gonna take a long time um so yeah i guess we're just gonna have to focus on other research for a while and we can come back to this place check on it every once in a while and see if it's making any good progress on the aura but you see the down arrow on the if you noticed it on the bottom right it pops up every once in a while when it's pulling v from the uh the aura here but once this thing starts getting, well, once it gets completely full, then it should start overflowing. I don't know what happens if you remove a tank entirely and just have this feed into a conduit. It might back up to this and just stop producing V. I don't know. But um, I wonder if there's a way to just pump all of this stuff into the atmosphere. If I just put a single filter on here, that would pump it all. Um, that would that would free up space in here, but it would basically become more pure over time. Um, but the single filter would pump all of the the taint into the atmosphere, speeding up that part of the process here. Uh, hmm. So I want to do it though. Forget what a filter needs. It might even be a better way of generating. Um, actually, I have a, I have the, uh, the website open that shows the aura mechanics, like what things contribute to change charge and what don't. So, um, 
Concentrated taint we can't make yet, but we have the discovery for it, I think. And once we get some taint, then we might be able to get the ingredients needed to make that. Um, what else? Hmm. Tainted logs help speed up the taint infection. So, like, once we actually have that um, started, it should continue pretty efficiently on its own. Uh, so it adds 5 taint charge when you use a Thaumic Crystallizer. Actually, a Thaumic Crystallizer might also pull um, the aura charge from the area. Not aura charge. Might pull um, V from the aura. So it, no, it actually it says here it converts liquid V back to V crystals by re-energizing re depleted ones. It does still make a plus 5 taint charge, which is better than none. Um, a really efficient way to increase the taint is to use the void bracelet. I don't know if we have that yet from the Eldritch Knowledge Path. But if we do... No, we definitely don't. Okay. Forget about that for a while. It, it requires some pretty late stuff. Um, Occultic Enchanter... Hmm. Do we... I don't think we have the Occultic Enchanter yet, but that contributes quite a lot to the taint in the area. Uh, Arcane Seal... Hmm. One of those. Arcane Furnace... When Items are being smelted. That could be fun. So, I could just bring an arcane furnace over here and smelt a whole bunch of stuff in it. Like, literally throw cobblestone in it and leave it running all the time. I'm gonna give that a try, because that would speed things up quite a lot. How's this going, by the way? I don't know if that was keeping it loaded, because this is way farther down than it was when we got here. Um, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that, but it's obviously working pretty quickly now. Let's see. And a way to pull the V out of here is to have the furnace hooked up to it. Arcane furnace is in the Thalmic Confuser, a fiery crystal furnace, and block of iron. So yeah, let's go back to base and make one of those. And just to get remaining taint out of the tank so that it can be thrown directly into the atmosphere, I am going to make another filter, which seems kind of, kind of counterintuitive, but I think it will work faster at making a taint infection. Um, it'll destroy a little bit of the taint, but it'll pump way more into the atmosphere just being a single filter. So, um, I need a fiery crystal, and a block of iron, and a furnace, and I also need filter. Oh jeez, I totally forgot this took so much stuff. Okay, so I need 11 iron total, 4 enchanted wood. Coal? Yeah. Or charcoal. Okay. So 11 of the iron. And one redstone, one charcoal. Four enchanted wood. Don't have enough, so let's make more. Momentum and wood. So four enchanted wood, elementum, two iron ingot, and two V conduits. Now was that in No, that's just shape crafting. Okay. Iron, 
MP conduits, wood, and a momentum. Cool. So V filter. Then we make the block of iron. The fiery crystal, I can put this away. And I need furnace. I could just make one, but I have some spares already, so why not? Furnace, check. And is that made in the yeah, in the infuser? 20p. I have to say, I totally didn't expect to be making a taint infection, but it's a pretty neat project to to focus on trying to make a quick taint infection when you're like halfway through Thumbcraft 2 research and can do a lot of stuff and have like multiple locations with like teleportation set up because um, like you can really efficiently do it I think. I'm gonna grab a bunch of cobblestone since I'm here. Should be nine stacks I think that fit in the infuser. Or uh, arcane furnace. So we're basically just gonna cook all of that cobblestone. I'm excited to see how this works. Now, has it been cooking? Should be pretty much done. Okay, so it, I think it has been cooking it while we've been away. Um, this is getting fairly full. Quite a bit of taint in there. Okay, so... Arcane Furnace and filter. So we want... so this is going to basically pull the taint out. I don't want to hook it up in... well, I mean because I need some taint for this, but I can always just smelt stuff and then while it's busy pulling the... well no, just one filter should pull the taint out really fast. So I might just have to remove the, f the filter if I want to use the arcane infuser because that requires taint. So that I guess is what I'm gonna do. But the filter's gonna go over here. Why is it connected to this? Whatever. It should work fine regardless. So, um, you see the taint charge going up. And it's it's pulling the taint out of here pretty quickly. Like, three or four seconds per taint, and that's gonna be gone pretty soon. Um, but it's basically putting it directly into the atmosphere. It's not doing anything like... I expected some of it to get cooked off, like maybe a quarter of it or, or more, but it's really almost none. So that's interesting, and that seems like it'll work really, really well for our purpose here. So I can actually just throw a bunch of stuff in here, and it should be thrown directly into the atmosphere instead of having to increase the taint charge artificially with this. But let's try doing both. Let's try using this Oh, really? It needs a solid block under it. Alright. So let's try putting this here and cooking up all of this and then smelting all of the results. Because that'll give us more taint, or more V and taint from here when we smelt stone instead of cobblestone, because cobblestone was nerfed because you can make it in a cobblestone generator. Um, so we're not only getting more taint through that after it's stone, but we're generating taint charge by using this constantly. Um, I just need to get a fuel in there for that to happen. So let's do that. Which fuel? I mean, I suppose I've got loads of charcoal, so let's do that. Cool. So, just gonna watch the taint charge and taint level here. It's already at like 1400. I think it started a lot closer to a thousand at the start of this episode, but this I think is pretty efficient. So we've gone through one depleted crystal, it's pulled some atmospheric V, some, some uh, V from the aura. Um, Unfortunately, it seems like it's only pulling like one V every four or five seconds, 
So it's going to take a long time to get that 4,000 down low enough for a taint infection. It should eventually happen, but yeah, I think boosting the taint level might be a good option here because that should artificially drive the aura level down once the taint level gets high enough. So how quickly is this cooking through here? Wow, 5% taint charge. That is so cool. I can't imagine I'm saying that, but that is, that's really neat. Um, okay, and this is staying pretty full. The taint level in it is almost gone though, which is unfortunate. But now that I have stone generating, I can throw that in here. Get a little bit more taint. Which seems to be immediately going here. But now it's starting to accumulate. Hmm. Okay, so I'm not going to babysit this much more. I would like to have a lot more of stuff cooking in there. But I didn't bring enough cheap stuff, so I'm going to actually come right back here. Fill up the cauldron to fill up the tank. Um... So that V is supposed to get cooked off through this furnace being used. The problem is it's not using the V quickly enough, so I'm curious how to burn off that extra V. Hmm. Because if this gets full, then whatever taint I put in here is just going to sit there. Well, no, it'll get pulled out into this because it's connected also, so maybe that won't be a bad thing. Yeah, I think this could work out well. So let's cook these two. And then I'll come right back with a whole stack of cobblestone. I don't care that it's cobblestone. Oops. That should be enough. Oh, that step up can be a little annoying. Guy up. Well, we're almost at fifteen hundred tight. The V level is still over four thousand, but I'm not concerned at the moment. It'll go down over time. Um, having more of these might speed it up, but I think... Yeah, each of them requiring a V crystal, I'm not going to make any more of them. Not if I don't need to. Um, you know what? <laughs> Let's try something. Nice. makes things a lot easier. And actually, I could probably just leave the tank off of this because it will pull V through to this every once in a while. This would end up filling with V though, I suppose. So having it offload somewhere is nice. But yeah, we're finally below 4000 V. The taint charge is below 5%. It was at 5% for a while, so I don't know why that's so low now. Maybe it's because it's nighttime, and this is working less optimally. But I didn't think this would generate much taint charge, if any, so I don't know.
Yeah, that taint charge is really low now. Huh. Oh well. I'm gonna stop babysitting this. Go back to base. We can do a little research. And maybe the next episode or two we will have a taint infection and can finish that up. Yeah, my god. I need to keep an eye on my Charm of Vigor because it... If I just realized I don't need to have the, the uh, apples there anymore, but the Charm of Vigor... I don't know how much charge it can... Or how many uh, durability it has, but it had four points already. So I suppose any time that you would eat like an apple, it would put a point on of durability loss. And if it has like 20 total, maybe, then that would probably be gone in a matter of a few days. So I'll keep an eye on it, make sure that it doesn't completely break. Hopefully. Um, yeah, so we have loads more of lost knowledge to research. Did I make any more? I did make more V-valves. Okay, so we've got a load of V's to help with research. Cool. Alright. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put these in here, I guess. I do have chicken, so I don't really need apples in here too, but the place for them to be. Okay, so with those, those, what can we get? I only want to put nine in because if it did succeed with all of them, it would fill that up and not drop any on the ocean floor. Pickaxe of the core. Tortuous and tricky. Yeesh. So that one's getting smelted. Tricky one, we will try. being 29% success, 21% failure, it is possible eventually, but I wonder, since these have a research value of 2, and I have so many seeds and can get them so easily, I wonder if I could just use those to boost the tricky research, so that it actually has a decent chance without costing much for me. I mean, that added... Yeah, that lowered the failure chance and raised the success chance, so that's a lot better. Nice. Inert carpet torturous, again. <laughs> Alright. And... Pickaxe of the core moderate. So we're doing pickaxe of the core, we're smelting the inert carpet. And if we continue to get tortuous inert carpet, then maybe that's the only type that it has, but... Until I get, like, several of them that are all tortuous, I'm not going to just try to research it, because that'd be wasting a lot of time. Okay, uh, pickaxe of the core. 
I'm glad I had I um, made multiple Kai's attempts early on, because even though they, I suppose they were doubling my number of fragments of knowledge for a long time, but it's really handy when you're trying to research something that takes a long time and you want to continue making discoveries. Or um, progressing theories. Not theories, uh, progressing fragments, rather. X of the core, get that out of the pool of research. So any materials harvested automatically smelted as if by a furnace. You can suppress that power. You can create a small wisp that will guide you to the most valuable item it can find nearby. That could be useful if you're not playing with more useful mining tools, or more useful mining mods. Um, the destruction catalyst kind of <laughs> makes mining trivial. Uh, from equivalent exchange too. But yeah, that could be neat. It'd be interesting to try at some point. Pickaxe of the core. Takes a lot of fiery crystals though. Wait a second. Really? Damn it. <laughs> Alright. Didn't realize they were the same one. Um, Alright then, so let's research these. I can put this away. I can smelt this one. And I need to stop forgetting to uh, turn this off when it's done smelting stuff. Charcoal's not free, you know. Alright, ooh, Thaumium Crucible. That one, pretty sure, is the one that can be turned off with redstone signal and it doesn't overflow. So let's research that one for sure. And it's a moderate difficulty, so that's even better. I'll boost it with cobblestone, just because. And here, do a little bit more research. What? That is the... Uh, the risk of that. So this one being moderate, the other one's moderate. So yeah, I guess I'll just smelt this one. Cool. So this one holds more V. It takes two Fomium ingot and a crucible of eyes. I forgot what that requires to be made, but with, I'm not even going to use it after creating it. I'll just upgrade it to this. Um, holds more V and it's more efficient than basic crucible. And when it's nearly full, it emits redstone signal, cannot overflow, and any excess items remain inside to so lose room to smelt them. So, it's basically the OP version that you can just have like an automatic cobble gen dropping stuff directly into. Uh, this is full? No. It might not be full by the time I'm done making things. Uh, so, Crucible of Eyes requires. In the Thalmic Infuser, a Crucible, Spider Eye, and Redstone. This is any good V Crystal. Or maybe even a Tainted Crystal or a Depleted one. So yeah, Depleted Crystal, Cauldron, and Furnace. So 7 Iron, Furnace, Depleted Crystal. Depleted Crystal. I don't have seven iron on me, but I do have diamonds and a philosopher's stone. That is definitely enough iron. Okay, so crucible, crystal, and furnace. And what else? Redstone, spider eye.
thought I had a spider eye in here. But it might just be over here. So I'm gonna grab the furnace, spider eye. Must be blind. Um so furnace. Spider eyes should be in here. I know I have them somewhere. Yeah, actually, there's ten of them. Okay, so crystal of eyes, check. And then thomium. It's just two thomium ingot and a crystal of eyes. Cool. So let's grab those right away. This should empty pretty soon. It only has one V. That's like, there's barely anything in there, so I could break it and spill all that. But it'll all be pulled out by the time this is done being made. So, crucible first. Or cauldron, rather. Then crucible. Wait, crucible can't require an infuser because you use the crucible to get, uh, to get the V to make the infuser. So, um, furnace, cauldron, and crystal. Check. Okay. Now I use this. Crucible, redstone. And for, uh, spider eye. So, crucible of eyes. Cool. Thaumium. Crucible of eyes and thaumium. Nice. So this is, I think, the highest tier of Crucible. It'd be nice to upgrade it. Cool. Oh, I might have just been able to take that one and upgrade it directly. But whatever. So um, if I turn... Hmm. So if I throw a bunch of st wait a second so if this is getting a charge which I think it is right now it turns off so if I remove this and then I fill this up to the top which would take a lot of stuff but I think I can do it then we can test out the automatic redstone signal thing and if it doesn't turn this off when that happens that means I need to put like a block and then put a redstone wire coming away from this on top of that block to turn this off but I think it'll just make this directly turn off from above if it gets full. So let's try to fill it up. And these. And I can put that... No, I don't need that. Um, just to move it out of here temporarily, I guess. Okay. I have step up. I keep forgetting I have step up. This is completely full. That's full. And this is nearly 500. Pretty sure it can go above 500. Yeah, so still need to throw more in. But let's see how much more I need. I don't know what the capacity of this is, but it might be a thousand. Whatever. Um, Let's keep some research going, and then check on the taint infection progress. Inert carpet. Is this another torturous? It is another torturous. Oh my god. Okay. So that one's going to get smelted. Um, this I need to put away. <laughs> wow. 
This might be the last one in... No, there's still other Lost Knowledge things. There's... Um, pretty sure Brain in a Jar... That might be Forbidden Knowledge, but it might be this. Oh, we got a hard one. And another Tortuous. Okay, so I'm going to just remove these. Um, now that we have a non-Tortuous one. And... Try boosting... Oh, I got rid of all of my seeds. So, yeah, I suppose I'll just try to uh, finish this with Cobblestone. It should be fine, because it's not tricky, it's just hard. Um, I could use the Harvest Goddess Band over here. This is still on. Um, and I removed the switch, so... Yeah, I'm going to use the Harvest Goddess Band here and try to get more seeds to help with research. I suppose it would be even more efficient to um, to just take some stacks of bread with a research value of 3. Well, they have a smelting value of 12 actually, so instead of smelting the seeds down, I should be smelting the bread and using the seeds for research boost. Alright, so I'll actually keep the seeds on me. Grab these ones. Um, wheat. Alright, pickaxe of the core was here. Thumb crucible. Okay. Oh my god. Alright, uh bread. Smelt the bread down. Is is it full? This might be full. It's kind of a strange number to be full at. Seven hundred forty eight. If you add them together. But yeah, I think it's completely full. Um but this is still on, so that's a that's a bad sign. Um, let me try putting just temporarily a block here and just a piece of redstone. Okay, so that's on. And that has turned off. It has this, but it's not actually cooking. Otherwise we would see fire. So, it does seem like this transmits to the sides, but not below. I could make this cleaner by using like... I wonder if red, red alloy wire would go straight down the sides of both of these. So when this like activates, it just like sends it straight down the side and it's really clean. I'll look into that between episodes, but right now I'm gonna, just going to keep this. It should suffice. Um, the unfortunate thing is that in order to actually, when this is full, in order to actually use this furnace, I would need to remove some V from the system somehow, or just remove this. So I need a switch in the system in that path regardless. Um, yeah, I'll figure, I'll figure that part out later. So, what do we have here? Inner carpet. Discovery. Nice. Enchanted fabric. And four gold ingot. So you can soar through the air like a bird, but you need to infuse it with an extract of lightest air to charge it. And it will need to be recharged. I wonder if the recharge can be done in your alchemy bag. So actually, I might make this just to test that out. Um, inert carpet. With extract of lightest air. And 300 V. Yeah, it better be rechargeable in an alchemy bag with that cost. Um, so vaporous, water bottle, shimmer leaf, and 250 V. Oh my god. And even more V, because of these, five enchanted carpet, each one requiring 25 V and a V crystal. Wow. Yeah, I might look into that 
between episodes and come back to it. Um, for now it's going to stay up here. Put this away. And... So these need to get smelted. This can be research booster. These get smelted. Alright. So now that I have that research done, let's see what we find. Supposedly I need to research a V-Crystal in order to get the Crystal Bell from the Lost Knowledge Path, but as we saw earlier when I tried to research brains in, or, uh, zombie brains, it just gave me fragments of knowledge. So I don't know if that's like, if doing that research once to get a fragment of knowledge will like set some flag somewhere in Thumbcraft 2 code that like later on when you're doing research on fragments of that knowledge, it will look at that flag and if that flag is set, it will say, okay, this, for example, brain in a jar discovery is an option for this research to produce. Whereas if that flag is not set, it would exclude that from the pool of options to be discovered. I suspect that's how it works, but it's still kind of weird and I, since I haven't actually um, successfully researched using that type of approach, I don't know how it is supposed to work. Two research fragments in one. I still don't know how that's possible, but okay. I suppose I shouldn't complain. Wait a second, Fragments of Lost Knowledge gave fragments? You've got to be kidding me. Why am I get? Oh my god, no way. So this is basically telling me, I think, that that the pool of options for fragments of lost knowledge are pretty much empty. Like, there's nothing in that pool of options until I unlock something somewhere else. Because I know for a fact there are other things to unlock in Lost Knowledge Path. For example, the Crystalline Bell. Um, let's, I suppose, try to unlock that then. So, I don't like researching crystals, but I'm going to give it a try. And I think three is a fair number to, uh, to try. And these should give it a nice boost. 20% and 0. So actually, uh, I want to research those, and they're in the Lost Knowledge Path, so to boost it as best as possible, I should use some rare artifact or exceptional artifact from the Lost Knowledge Path, and I think that's what I'm going to do. So kind of at that point where, well, no, I can get more later, so I'll grab all, all four of these. Um, but since I, I don't want to waste crystals, that's what I'm going to boost with. Oh my god, 166%! Oh my god, what? <laughs> Hold on a sec, I don't want to waste these if they're going to boost it that much. Um... Uh, fine. Get rid of that. I need to offload some things. Alright, research booster here. Fragments. Um, crucible I want to put away for now. Discovery for inner carpet. Oh. Just realized I kind of wanted to investigate that. It's going to be super expensive. Well, it's somewhere in here. 
I'll just keep my search filter on inert carpet for however long that stays there and maybe remember later. Okay, so this actually did max at exactly 750, so maybe before it just wasn't doing it because it didn't have anything that was going to produce less than the maximum number of V for the container. So it was at like 2 below 750, and it might have been trying to smelt things that were going to give it more than 2. Okay, so research booster, fragments, fragments, and yeah, so I don't want to boost it with two of these. I wonder how much it boosts it with just one. 86 and 0. That's fair. And it gave me another fragment. I don't know why it's doing that. But this is a tortuous uh, discovery, or theory, as are these. So all of these need to get smelted at some point. This is for research boosting. Um, put that there, tortuous, sure, keep that there. Um, I could probably research the tortuous one with boosting it with like these types of things. Do I want to? I don't know. Fragments of lost knowledge. Okay. Alright, um... I guess let's keep trying, right? See if we get anything that's not... Uh, that's not tortuous. I think the fact that this is from the same school of uh, knowledge as the V-crystals are, I think that that is helping it get such a high success chance. Fragments of lost knowledge. No! Yeah, please succeed. <laughs> Three fragments of lost knowledge from that. Uh. Crystalline bell. Is that moderate? Moderate. Awesome. Perfect. So now, I still have two of the vaporous crystals. I lost all four of those exceptional or rare artifacts, but this should succeed easily without boosting it. So that is pretty cool. Um, what do I need to drop off? These. And these get smelted. I'll just throw them in here. Well, no, they'll just... Yeah, they won't mix with those. Okay. And that one. Vapor's crystal. I have to wonder if there's anything in the lost knowledge path that we still have to research, because this was the only thing coming to mind. But there's got to be other ones. It's a really big path. And brain in a jar, I forget which one that is. Um, actually, let me take a peek at this. Brain in a jar. Forbidden knowledge. And you're supposed to research brains. So, what artifacts do we have in the forbidden knowledge category? We have these. Uncommon, common, uncommon. One single rare forbidden artifact. And a bunch of uncommon ones. So, we might be able to successfully research that using those artifacts and brains, now that we know how that process goes. Uncommon, uncommon, rare. Okay, so we have research boosters, we have zombie brains, and other research boosters. Let's give it a try. Right, so to use the uncommon ones or to use the rare ones. 
64% chance. What if they're two of the same? Same. Alright. Um, and what if it's a rare one and an uncommon one? 84% chance, right? Yeah. But since I don't have two rare ones, I this is basically my best outcome. Um, my best option. So, do I, do I just waste a bunch of zombie brains, or do I... Yeah, let's... Let's try this. Fingers crossed, we actually get a brain in a jar. Oh my god, that was really fast. Tricky. It's still better than not having the theory. Cool, so it's really nice that like actually figured out how this stuff is supposed to work. So put seeds to boost that, 29, 21, and it should eventually finish. And I don't need to research anything here, but just because I've wasted, I have extra cobblestone, I'm going to throw it up there. Alright. So I can put these away. Still have these B valves, more fragments. I'm curious. Once this is done, I'm going to try researching some more lost knowledge and see if anything else was unlocked with that. I do know the Forbidden Knowledge path should have the Occultic Enchanter available now that Brain in a Jar is out of the pool in the Forbidden Knowledge path. So that is exciting. I don't think I even used the Crystalline Bell. Okay, one diamond and a piece of glass and lots of V. Could be used to retrieve individual crystals from a cluster, cannot harvest the last one. So each time you use this and remove a crystal from the cluster, it does have an effect on the taint charge in the area, but it is better than completely removing the cluster because the cluster will grow more crystals up to the maximum amount. I think that's only true of ones that you place yourself, ones that are in the area from world gen. I don't think they'll grow. Um, but once you get enough crystals, and at this point I have enough crystals, you can use nine of them to make one of those crystal ores and then use the crystalline bell to uh, pull crystals off of that over time and have a theoretically infinite supply of V crystals. Um, it supposedly takes a really long time to grow those though, so whether it's actually a useful way of doing that is not clear. Um, all right, rain in a jar. Finally, um, so yeah, enchanting and re so basically because um, this is something that was discovered here so late in the game, it isn't going to help much, but it should help with enchanting if I go that route. Since I have this down here, I'm going to start by replacing bookshelves here, and um, with with brain in a jar. And then I'll upgrade the enchanter to one that lets you pick enchantments, and that will basically be the OP uh, end game of the uh, forbidden research path, I think. Forbidden knowledge path. Um, unless I'm mistaking, un unless I'm forgetting some things, I'd have to look at the, uh, the wiki again for all that information. But okay, so we have the Thaumium Crucible set up so that it is automatically turning off the furnace beneath. So that's convenient. I will upgrade this between episodes to have a red wire just connecting the two and like a switch that can forcibly turn it off or on somehow. I'll figure something out. But um, yes, yeah, so we have that. I need to recharge this. Uh, we have the discoveries for Brain in a Jar and Crystalline Bell, so I'm definitely going to be using those. Maybe setting up a farm for the crystals and just hoping that they grow quickly enough to not make it a waste of all of my V crystals that I have. Um, I do want to check on the Taint Infection progress, but we're about at time to wrap up this episode. Okay, so. 
it hasn't gone very far down on the how much V we have. The taint level also hasn't gone very high up. This has continued functioning though, so it might just take a very long time to achieve our goals. This is nearly done, so I might come back here and refill it before uh, or between episodes. But for now, let's just dump a whole bunch of V into or a whole bunch of taint into the atmosphere, to the aura. Nice. Okay. And then this should be pulling the V out. It is really slow though. Um, yeah, I need more cobblestone in here. I'll put this up here to rem remind myself. Um, it's not going through the charcoal too quickly, so that's good. I suppose I could have multiple of these set up, basically one next to the other, and just continually dump stuff in here. And if it overflows, it overflows, and it contributes to the taint infection. And if it doesn't overflow, it pulls all of that taint out directly into the atmosphere immediately. Um, kind of expensive though, because it requires like iron and... well, depleted crystals aren't a problem, so I mean, that that's good at least. But the filter requires the crystals because of the enchanted wood, and um, I'm trying to remember what else the filter needed. Elementum is cheap, the conduits are cheap, but the enchanted wood... So I might I might double this setup here and just let these other things continue doing what they're doing because it's kind of neat, but since this is full I'm going to just break it and replace it. Cool. Um, and I think in an episode or two we will have the start of a taint infection here and that will be pretty neat. Hopefully we haven't finished all of Thongcraft 2 research by then, because at this rate it's questionable whether we, we will or not. But um, yeah, so I'm going to wrap up the episode there, do a few things between episodes to tidy things up and you know make a little expansion on things. Um, and next episode we will pick up where we left off with making a taint infection and seeing what other research we have left. Alright, take care everybody. <laughs>